Today is the day we make my backyard bunker disappear. If you remember, we started off above ground with two massive culverts, stormwater runoff pipes that were delivered to my house. We then hired a crane that hauled these tubes through the air and set them below ground, and today we're finally going to make it underground by adding a lot of rocks and gravel and basically putting my yard back together. Let's get started. Now, when it comes to burying a bunker, you might think that all we do is take the dirt we pulled out of my backyard and just toss it back in the big hole, right? Wrong. It's actually far more complicated than that, but also a far, far cooler process. For one, the dirt we took out of the hole has been naturally compacting over millions of years. And if we take that same loose stuff and put it back in, it would be too soft, it might settle, and just won't behave predictably. The black drain pipe I'm putting down below the bunker is going to help any excess water flow to a central area so we can pump it out if we need to later with a sump pump. Just keep pulling until I tell you to stop. This sand though is so permeable that we probably will never need it, but since it would be impossible to add later, here I am. Better safe than sorry. Okay, we're good right there. The most important thing we need to do today is to add structure along the bottom curve of the helically corrugated culvert pipe, where all our living area is gonna be. If there are any pockets of air or settling that occurs underneath that curve, the quarter million pounds of dirt that we put on top will squash our tube like a tin can. Scary thought, yes, but if we use this engineered peak gravel, chucked in with our very cleverly named rock chucker machine, or slinger truck, we can support the tube well enough that it could, in theory, according to the engineering spec sheet, be buried up to 100 feet underground. It's way easier throwing it than it is to bring it all down here by hand. The rock slinger is throwing pebbles exactly where we need them, from 60 feet away, saving us a whole lot of time and energy, since time is money when you're working with big machines. The gravel it's slinging is small enough and solid enough that it's basically considered compacted as it falls where it lands. We use shovels and a special pneumatic backfill tamper to help push and compact the peak gravel under the haunches of the curve of the bunker so that there are no air gaps. The green ratchet straps you see slung over the top of the bunker are attached to large concrete blocks, which help keep the tube secure as we're packing rocks up underneath it. Otherwise, the bunker would gradually start floating up to the surface, and that would put us right back to where we started, with the tubes above ground. And we don't want that. Once we get the engineered fill up to the center line of the tube, we can drop down a little remote-controlled vibratory sheep's foot roller. It's called a sheep's foot roller because the construction guys are really good at naming stuff. It has radially projecting spikes that produce an effect on the ground similar to a flock of passing sheep. It's great this guy exists because I'm fresh out of sheep at the moment, and this guy's doing a pretty good job. We'll be running him non-stop as the hole slowly fills up and he works his way back to the surface again. We'll also be spraying in a constant flow of water since water acts as both a lubricant and a carrier of dirt particles, helping the small little bits and pieces of rock flow down into the larger rocks, compacting the dirt even further. We gotta keep everything wet. The tighter the dirt particles fit now means the less settling, hopefully none, that will happen in the future. We're trying to replicate what Mother Nature did over millions of years in just a few days. 
Once all the gravel and rocky layers of dirt are back down, we have to go back and find the pile of clay that we collected and put in my neighbor's yard. The clay layer is gonna act as kind of a moisture barrier, helping to keep the rain and the sprinkler water from flowing down into the sandy gravel and getting lost forever. The clay helps keep and hold the water in the topsoil for longer, so the plants and bugs can do all the nature stuff that plants and bugs do. I'm not a botanist, but I did watch a bug's life once and those little guys are important. We also tossed in the exit shaft on the far side of the bunker and welded that to the flat plate. With the same galvanized bee decking and waterproofing sure tar that we put on the entry shaft. Speaking of waterproofing and corrosion, we got this extra cool little layer of protection called a sacrificial anode. One of the most scientifically cool parts of this bunker project is something called the sacrificial anode, very similar to the anode inside of a water heater that needs to replace every five years, just much larger. It's not even a bar, it's a cast, a casted zinc bar. Inside of this bag is a 15 pound bar of silver colored zinc. Zinc is a metal that's extremely susceptible to corrosion, much more so than steel, which our bunker is made from. A sacrificial anode kind of acts like fish bait for corrosion. The zinc rod is surrounded by gypsum, the same kind of stuff that's in drywall. When underground, the gypsum will provide a uniformly moist environment around the anode, so the whole bar will corrode at the same time. Once again, sacrificing itself so the bunker doesn't corrode. The zinc basically offers us another level of protection. A sacrificial anode has a more negative electrochemical potential than the metal it's protecting. Or maybe if you think of Thanksgiving dinner, you're gonna eat the thing on your plate that's most delicious first. And the same thing happens with corrosion and zinc. And instead of the earth corroding the steel, the earth is gonna corrode this sacrificial anode. Again, remember, we're talking about decades and centuries. A bar this big should buy us another 30 years on top of the 100 years that the coal tar we painted on earlier gave us. Basically, corrosion is not something I'm gonna have to ever worry about. It's a problem I'm leaving for my grandkids' grandkids. The anode itself costs about $416, so we'll add that to the tally of the whole cost of this bunker. And if this video gets over 100,000 likes, we'll unbury this anode in 10 years to see how corroded it actually got. Hit that subscribe button. As the hole fills up and starts widening onto the terrace steps, we can start to bring in our bigger equipment, like the skid steer and the excavator. Except instead of having a bucket attachment this time, the excavator is rolling a pad foot compactor wheel. Using the whole weight of the excavator, the prongs are able to sink down and put a lot of pressure on specific points of the loose fill, very sufficiently smashing the soil. Again, the more my dirt is compacted now, the less settling that will happen later. That's good. <laughs> Only slightly terrifying. I wouldn't have imagined before this project starting that filling up the hole actually takes longer than digging the hole in the first place. Because each scoop of dirt they have to place down and then compact it in levels to make sure that the whole thing is going to stay solid and that the ground doesn't sink once it's all finished and the grass is back on top of it. So close, the top of the culvert is right here and it's very easy to walk across. It's nice not having the massive hole anymore. This is much safer and I'm excited to see this tube completely disappear. 
We have the hoses running nonstop, which also helps compact the soil, making sure like the loose bits of dust and stuff stay stuck between the larger rocks. And all of the compacting helps the bunker to maintain its shape as the earth around it supports the entire structure. The compaction is what allows this tube to be buried up to 100 feet underground, even though we're only going six feet underground. it's over and the very last patch of pipe is visible and it's going to be gone hopefully forever at least during my lifetime right here <laughs> so cool. the outside of the pipe is officially gone and hopefully we'll never again see the light of day the only time we're going to see that tube again is from the inside Once all the clay has been returned to its original layer, we bring back the nutrient-rich topsoil. With all the gravel and dirt fully supporting the bottom and sides of the bunker tubes, it's now more than strong enough to support the full weight of the tractors driving over it. The ground and Mother Earth herself has now become my bunker just as much as the metal tube is my bunker. They're working together to support us through the apocalypse. And finally, the large, flat, vibrating road roller is used to compact the final layer so it doesn't look like a herd of sheep just finished walking through my yard. And just in the nick of time, it snowed over the weekend, but luckily we have the entire ground put back over the bunker. Lucky for us, though, it's far easier to play sod than it is to set a bunker. Does the sod look a little bit dead? Yes, but also it's the winter and it's supposed to be hibernating anyway. I think it's time we see what it's like inside of the bunker. That is legitimately terrifying. So crazy. And we are officially buried underground in a bunker. Woo! And obviously we're nowhere near complete. And hopefully in the next video we're able to get a floor underneath and then we have to build out this bunker as if it were as nice as an RV. Since that's pretty much what it is, a mobile home underground that's not very mobile anymore. I'm talking bedrooms, bathrooms, entertainment centers, kitchens, everything is going to be fully furnished by the time we're finished. But in the next video, for sure, we will have a floor, hopefully a little bit less echo, and I'm going to go over the pricing of everything that we've spent so far on this project. It's a little more than I wanted, but relatively reasonable, all things considered. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you next week. Go get your dad. Go get him. Good job, dude. Are you filming stuff? Is it going right now? It is going right now.